In the last few years, the scientists have discovered quite a lot of different exoplanets and a lot of different mysterious objects. With some other objects, such as for example exomoons, or moons of other planets, being very elusive and extremely difficult to find. But today we're going to talk about a confirmation of one such object. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're going to discuss the official confirmation that there is definitely some sort of a moon-like object being formed around this distant planet known as PDS-70C, the object that has been studied very thoroughly for the past few years. But what exactly is this object and what exactly are we looking at right here? And so let's start with where exactly all of this is located and what kind of a star this is. PDS-70 is located in the constellation of Centaurus at around 370 light years away from our planet. It's a very young star and it's approximately 0.76 masses of the Sun with the current age estimate being about 5.6 million years old. It means that this is not actually technically a star yet. This is not a main sequence star. It does not burn hydrogen to produce energy just yet. And so this type of an object is actually known as a T Tauri star. An object that's going to become an actual star in a few million years, but is not one yet. It's still developing. Something that obviously our sun has gone through as well approximately 4.5 billion years ago. But generally speaking, T Tauri stars are extremely active, they also produce a lot of different magnetic effects, and also use these very powerful magnetic fields to guide and control the matter in the protoplanetary disk, and to actually acquire size and grow as well. At the same time, because they're so magnetically active, they generally produce a lot of different powerful emissions, as well as a lot of really powerful expulsions like the one you see right here. These are actual images taken from another T Tauri star. But since they don't actually burn hydrogen yet, they have to get energy from somewhere. And so it's believed that they get energy from burning beryllium. With lithium becoming an isotope of beryllium, and then beryllium changing back into an isotope of lithium and continuing the reaction. And so that's generally what happens in these early stars. But one of the most exciting such star systems, at least for the past few years, was this one right here known as PDS-70. Exciting because of these detections from the last few years. And first, a few years ago, we've talked about how there was a discovery of a first planet, then the second planet, and then some other observations, unusual observations, around this planet known as PDS-70C. And because all of this was directly imaged by looking at it directly with a telescope, this also made this the first ever detection of a protoplanet using this particular method. And so this was the first time the scientists were able to look at a baby planet and to actually see what happens in these early star systems. But both of these objects are actually pretty massive. PDS-70b, which is the less massive planet here, is probably around the same mass as our Jupiter, and it's also about 22 astronomical units away from the star. But its neighbor, PDS-70c, that's the planet that's about 4.5 masses of Jupiter and is slightly farther away at 30 astronomical units away from the star. But the total radius of the disk, including this really really thick part right here, is about four times the distance. It's about 140 AU, which is, I guess, about almost five times as far away as Neptune is from the Sun. But ever since the observations in 2019, it's really these particular patches around the planets that made the scientists really, really intrigued and super curious about what was actually happening around these planets. Were these actual moons being formed? Or was this something else entirely that we don't really understand just yet? For example, some scientists suggested that maybe this is actually how the planet is absorbing some of the mass from the disk, and how it's becoming larger and larger and more massive as well. And so what exactly was happening around these planets? New observations were needed. Although, quick side note. So the word moon, it's a bit of a misnomer. When we talk about exomoons, we really should not be calling them exomoons, mostly because our moon is a huge exception to a rule. Our moon was created in a very, very different manner from every other moon we can think of or we've discovered pretty much anywhere out there. Mostly because today it's believed that our moon was created as a result of a collision between two planets. And so technically we are in a kind of a binary system between a larger planet and a slightly smaller object. So the word moon in this case is not really an appropriate term for all of these other objects that we refer to as satellites. Because a lot of these other satellites, like Io, Ganymede, Europa and so on, they were created in a very different manner from our moon. But very likely in a similar manner to what we actually think is happening in these exoplanets and in these distant star systems such as PDS-70. And anyway, so the new observations came out very recently. And this is what they showed us. 
They showed us something with a lot more clarity and a lot more detail, something that we've never had before by looking at this object. And when zooming in on PDS-70C, it allowed the scientists to clearly identify what seems to be a circumplanetary disk, a disk from which we sort of believe moons are formed in the beginning. And if we were to try to imagine what all of this looks like, this is maybe what we would see. This is just an artistic representation. So this is a really, really large circumplanetary disk. It's believed to be about one astronomical unit in size, or the distance to the edge of the disk is about as close as the Sun is to planet Earth. So these are really, really large objects, way, way larger than anything we know of in the solar system or even in some other star systems out there. But nevertheless, this is still an incredible confirmation and of course an incredible discovery. Currently, the scientists believe that in this particular location, up to about three objects similar in size to our own moon could be produced over time, which is probably exactly how Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus acquired most of their moons as well. Some were obviously captured from the outside, but the main moons, like the one you see right here known as Io, these moons were very likely created in this manner. But since even today it's not entirely clear how planets form and how the moons form, these observations can definitely help the scientists reveal the details of what exactly is happening here and how this activity ends up producing massive planets like Jupiter and Saturn and also their moons as well. And since PDS-70 system seems to have two objects sort of reminiscent of Jupiter and Saturn, at least in terms of the mass difference, with one object being roughly around four times more massive than the other, this system definitely represents an extremely important opportunity to try to understand how all of this is formed and what exactly happens in these baby star systems. So for example, does the magnetic field truly play such an important role in creating both the planets and also possibly even the moons around them? And as you might have learned from one of the previous videos, it also seems to play an important role in distributing the amount of metals and in creating larger iron cores depending on the strength of the magnetic field. And this is something that was recently learned by studying the iron core of Mercury. Now at the same time, this new analysis also revealed that, well, interestingly, the partner planet, PDS-70D, which is roughly visible right here, does not seem to possess any circumbinary ring around it. And the scientists here think that it's actually because it was probably stolen by the larger partner over time. Which is of course really unusual because we know that Jupiter and Saturn are also not that far apart from each other, but both of them do contain moons. Although naturally Jupiter has more moons and also more massive moons overall. And so it would be really interesting to find out what exactly happened here and why it's so different compared to the solar system. At the same time, this is actually one of the few official confirmations of a potential exomoon around a distant planet. Exomoons, or moons of other exoplanets, are naturally extremely difficult to detect. As of today, we only have a few methods of maybe detecting them, but none so far have been as good at detecting something as this particular study right here. And since in this case all of this was detected by directly looking at an object, this makes this extremely difficult to try to recreate using some other systems. And so in this case, the so-called direct imaging is almost impossible to try to achieve around other systems. We could, however, maybe detect these objects, these exomoons, by using various transit methods, by looking at the shadows or variations of various shadows. Something like this has been detected in the past, but a lot of these detections have also been debated, mostly because maybe it was actually caused by something else. For example, some of these detections could have been actually maybe rings, or in some cases, could have been actually detections based on multiplanetary systems. It's also hypothetically possible to detect an exoplanet and its moon by using gravitational lensing effects, but this would require extremely sensitive observations and super sensitive telescopes that at the moment we might not actually possess. So this is something that could be possible in the future. One of the more interesting methods that someone proposed a few years ago was actually using the radio emissions from the magnetic fields of the planet. Because the moon is going to disturb the planet and produce various radio emissions, it could be possible to detect an exoplanet and its moon that way. And something like this could have happened in the past in one of the previous studies we've discussed, but confirming such an object would be extremely difficult. And so when it comes down to it, this right now is probably one of the best bets we have for either the currently existing exomoon or for the exomoons that are going to exist in the next few millions of years. But interestingly enough, another object that we're going to be discussing in one of the future videos 
or something that might have already come out if you're watching this in the future, is the peculiar multi-ring object known as Mamagex object. And here we are almost certain there were definitely moons detected. But all of this will be discussed in the video on the Mamagex object. But until then, well, that's pretty much it. It's really impressive how far we've gone from being able to detect just a tiny smudge that looked something like this a few years ago, to now being able to tell exact details of what happens in the star system by looking at it with the slightly more updated versions of the same telescope. Which of course means that in the next few years, we might be able to see even more detail from the same star system or some other star systems that the scientists are trying to investigate. Until then, well, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.